What's good, YouTube? This your boy, Money Mitch TV, coming to you straight off the hip. Man, it's been a while since I put something up on YouTube. I am back. My computer have crashed, and it took me about almost a week to fix it. Uh, but I pretty much had to fix it myself, uh, which that's the cheapest way than taking your computer to Best Buy and having somebody from Geek Squad overprice you to fix it where you could just fix it yourself. But anyway, the NBA trade deadline drama is getting better and better by the day. I'm going to start from the Serge Ibaka trade, then the DeMarcus Cousins trade, then Magic Johnson firing Mitch Kupchak and Jim Buss and becoming the head honcho of basketball operations for the LA Lakers. I'm just going to get straight into it. Also, yeah, the Carmelo saga continues too. Man, where I can start? All right, Serge Ibaka trade. That was a good trade that Serge Ibaka went to the Toronto Raptors in exchange for Terrence Ross, which Terrence Ross got traded to the Orlando Magic. And then Serge Ibaka got traded to the Toronto Raptors. That draft pick, they went a long draft too. I think that was a good trade on Toronto's end. That makes Toronto a better team defensively. And I have stated this before on previous videos where if Serge Ibaka goes to Toronto and you move Patrick Patterson to the bench, it makes your team better all around. Serge Ibaka will play defense. He is a prototypical power four, 6'10", that can shoot mid-range jumpers and he can block shots. And Patrick Patterson, which is an undersized power four, he can come off the bench and be like a Sam Perkins type player. Stand on the three point line and catch and shoot and get rebounds when needed. That is a good trade. Also, the biggest trade of the year, DeMarcus Cousins being traded to the New Orleans Pelicans in exchange for a Jimmy John sandwich, a bag of condoms, and a pair of Jordan shoes for him to go to the Pelicans. That's pretty much he got traded for. That was pretty much the value he got traded for. But really, the trade was really um, DeMarcus Cousins for Langston Galloway, Tyreek Evans, two draft picks going over to Sacramento. And to me, I feel like Sacramento was pretty much doing a fire sale, trying to just auction off DeMarcus Cousins to a bidder that can pretty much just give uh, a decent amount of assets. And you know, the thing that disappointed me about that trade where the Kings could have leveraged any team in the league to get DeMarcus Cousins. I even said this on a previous videos. If the Boston Celtics was ordered to get DeMarcus Cousins, if I was Vladi Divox, I would have asked for five of your first round draft picks and that's it. And which pretty much you would have just finessed the Boston Celtics for five draft picks for the next five years, which that would have been a great trade where anyway you don't get no players back, but you'll get a lot of draft picks where you can pretty much rebuild your whole team. And I said the same thing for the New York Knicks doing that to Boston. If Boston won in Melo, the Knicks could have leveraged that too. DeMarcus Cousins and Anthony Davis, that is going to be a crazy combination. You have Anthony Davis, a a natural power forward that can spread the floor by shooting. Also, he can um, play the five too, but he's so good with that mid-range jumper. Also, he have expanded his shooting range. He can be a decent three-point shooter too, and he can create his own shot. So he pretty much don't need nobody to create a shot for him. He can create his own. And DeMarcus Cousins, one of the best big man in the game since Shaq, is down there with Anthony Davis. He's a traditional center. He can post you up. He can block shots. He can shoot the mid-range. He can rebound. He can pretty much do it all as a classic style center. I feel like if New Orleans played this right, which New Orleans won the trade, New Orleans can have a championship contending team in the next three years. Here's where I come in and I'm gonna say this. All New Orleans have to do is bring one more free agent into the loop. If they just get one good, decent free agent and then pick up two bench players and draft just role players. Don't, don't try to shoot for a superstar. 
draft a good role player that could come in and contribute or you can or if they do draft like a like a um, uh, Alonzo Ball or or Dennis Smith they can develop that point guard and trade Drew Holiday to get better assets for the bench so if you give the Pelicans three years and if they do it right they will be a championship contending team all they need is a couple more shooters another playmaker and a backup big man they will be all right and, and, and that's all it takes for the Pelicans to win they got two cornerstone pieces to build a championship team as of now they just have to do it right if they don't do it right they fail and the biggest task they have to to come across is re-signing DeMarcus Cousins I think if the Pelicans go to the playoffs and they have some type of success this year and then come back next year and become a 50 win team then the, that will convince DeMarcus Cousins to re-sign with the Pelicans so that's one thing I will say but on to the next trade rumor the Cleveland Cavaliers are still looking for a playmaker they don't have the money or the assets to trade for another point guard and I said this before they have to wait until the buyout period and here are some point guards that will be available during the buyout period Darren Williams Rajon Rondo Jameer Nelson three good point guards also Jared Jack is still a free agent that's another point guard they can look at those three point guards could come in and contribute but I feel if Cleveland's gonna make a splash they're gonna go for Darren Williams first that's my gut feeling I think they're gonna do if they go for Darren Williams he could come off the bench be a six man and contribute immediately and also will take some of the scoring pressure off of Kyrie's shoulders where Kyrie's still going to be the closer but Darren Williams will be a great six man where your starting lineup will still be Kyrie at the one JR at the two LeBron at the three Tristan Thompson at the four and and whoever's at the five that's, that's pretty much whoever's at the five and then coming off the bench will be Darren Williams Kyle Korver and then so on and so on and Iman Shumpert that would be a good team so don't be surprised if Cleveland go after Deron Williams because Deron Williams is gonna pretty much ask for a buyout and also the Minnesota Timberwolves is trying to trade for Derrick Rose I don't know why Tom Thibodeau is trying to bring back Derrick Rose in the fold first he tried to get Jimmy Butler and that didn't work out now he's trying to get Derrick Rose I feel like Tom Thibodeau should not make that trade. To me, Tom Thibodeau is a horrible GM and he haven't even made a move yet. And I can tell because Tom Thibodeau, he might be a good coach, but he look like he might be a horrible GM to me. He He's going for pieces that that's not gonna fit with them. Derrick Rose going to the Minnesota Timberwolves is gonna mess up the chemistry for that young team. Jimmy Butler going to the Timberwolves is going to mess up the chemistry for that young team. That young team is solely built off of two players, two future all-star players, Andrew Wiggins and Carl Anthony Towns. Although Andrew Wiggins did not go to the all-star game this year and Carl Anthony Towns did get selected this year, but don't be surprised, Andrew Wiggins will get his chance. And it all takes one of those Western Conference All-Stars to decline and Andrew Wiggins is in. So yeah, Tom Thibodeau should not make that trade for Derrick Rose. I feel like what New York can do, if you're gonna trade Derrick Rose, trade him somewhere where he can go and just contribute. You know what, if I was Phil Jackson, I could have easily traded Derrick Rose to Sacramento. I could have asked for, I would have just said, give me Boogie and I'll give you Derrick Rose and whoever you want except for Carmelo in a draft pick. And you would've got Boogie and Porzingis together, which Porzingis can actually play the four, although he's too tall to play the four, but he can actually play the four. So yeah, but anyway. Also another, another breaking news that broke the internet today, the Lakers, the Lakers 
could have got DeMarcus Cousins yesterday or the day before or Sunday. They could have got DeMarcus Cousins the other day if they would just gave up Brandon Ingram. And I found out by reading articles, listening to a lot of podcasts, is that that was Jim Buss and Mitch Kupchak's fault. Jim Buss wanted DeMarcus Cousins and Mitch Kupchak didn't. Jeannie Buss wanted DeMarcus Cousins, but Mitch Kupchak, which that led them to lose their jobs this morning. And now the new man that's over basketball operations is Magic Johnson, which to me is a great move. Magic knows basketball, and I think he knows the business side of basketball. If you look at it, Magic Johnson owns the LA Dodgers. He So he knows something about owning a franchise and running a franchise. So that's a good look for the Lakers. And also Magic just hired one of Kobe Bryant's former agents, Rob Polinko, which that's, uh, that's a pretty okay move, but it, it makes sense to Magic. And don't be surprised Magic Johnson hired Kobe Bryant as an advisor. Don't be surprised Magic Johnson bring back other former Lakers to be working in the front office. I can give you a name, Byron Scott. Don't be surprised Byron Scott comes back to the Lakers to work in the front office. Don't be surprised if Phil Jackson flies back to LA to reunite with Jeannie Buss to be in the front office with the Lakers. And don't be surprised if someone like Lamar Odom or so someone like Mark Manson, like names that's floating around in the in the business world of the NBA. Anyway, don't be surprised that Magic bring back those old former Laker players to run the franchise, which to me, I think is a good move for Magic. He's gonna revive Laker Nation. And I said this before, the Lakers are one of my favorite teams besides my home team, the Milwaukee Bucks. The, the Lakers is going to be back. It's going to take the Lakers another five years. First thing first, Mag Magic, <coughs> Magic Johnson will have to do is trade Lou Williams, trade Timothy Mouskov, and trade Lou Aldang. The two contracts that Mitch Kupchak have created was the Timothy Mouskov contract and, and the Lou Aldang contract. Those are horrible contracts. You're paying a hundred and... 30 million dollars for four years that's combined for those two people and each of them is getting i think a little bit under 20 per year and it's not making any sense but if magic finds a way to give up those players and start off with a clean slate the lakers will be back on track also look at the history of the los angeles lakers within the past five years the lakers have made a lot of bad moves First move, not keeping Dwight Howard. You let Dwight Howard walk for nothing where you knew you had an opportunity of trading Dwight Howard when he was gonna walk. Then you turn around, let Pau Gasol walk for nothing. Then you give Kobe Bryant two years, $50 million, where you could have actually gave Kobe Bryant two years, $30 million. I will tell you this, if Magic Johnson was the GM back then, he would have told Kobe, hey, take this two-year, $30 million pay cut, and we will build a team around you and we'll let you go on top. And Kobe would have sold on it. Kobe would have sold on it if Magic Johnson was the GM back then. But by Mitch Kupchak and Jeannie Buss overpaying Kobe, it killed the franchise. Plus letting Dwight Howard walk, plus letting Pau Gasol walk, plus made a lot of bad moves in between those type of moves so the, so within the past five years the lakers had bad luck because the franchise was poorly run by a guy that has an owner stake in a franchise where he has a big ego and he think he is good enough to be over basketball operations where he really don't have to work for the franchise he has enough money to sit back and just watch everyone else do their job and that's Jim Buss. And all Jim Buss had to do was sit back and just be an owner and then not meddle with the basketball side of stuff. I felt like Magic should have been in that seat years ago, but you know, it's good that he's in that seat now. Laker Nation is gonna be back up and running in the next five years or so. 
I ain't gonna say next year, but give them five years, Lakers gonna be back in their glory days. Look at the moves they had made so far before Magic. Hiring Luke Walton was the best thing for them. And the reason why hiring Luke Walton, because Luke Walton is a modern day NBA coach. He fits with today's NBA play style. And you can tell how he coaches his team. He got that same formula from Steve Kerr, where Steve Kerr got his formula from Greg Popovich and Phil Jackson. And Luke Walton took those philosophies that he accumulated and put it to his own works. And look, he has a team that runs a steady offense. The Lakers needed a renovation in the front office because everybody in that organization been in those capacities for 20 years or more. So you needed younger pieces to make that team revive. So you think about it, the Lakers is like that old mom and pop shop that been in the hood for the last 50 years. No renovations has been made. The shop been good, but all of a sudden they stopped making money because of lack of improvement. And a lot of times it comes to the to the decision of you have to bring in someone that can make a splash in that shop. And that's how the Lakers is all right now. They're an old mom and pop shop. But now since they brought in Magic Johnson, Magic Johnson is going to make great moves and the Lakers going to be back on top. But yeah. Also, the Carmelo Anthony saga continues. <sighs> I don't even want to talk about that. I really don't want to talk about Carmelo Anthony. The Knicks should have been traded Carmelo Anthony. All, all you have to do was go to the Clippers or Boston or any other team and say, I just want draft picks for the next four years or three years. And guess what? I bet you about 10 teams will give up three to four draft picks for Carmelo because majority of the teams in the NBA has the salary to fit him, except for Cleveland. But anyway. Like, comment, and subscribe. I'm glad I'm back doing YouTube again. Tell me what you think about the trade deadline that's going on right now. This your boy Money Mitch TV and I'm out.